Bowie State University is a place where dreams and aspirations have been nurtured and realized for 150 years. From its humble beginnings as an elementary school at Calvert and Saratoga Streets in Baltimore, Maryland, to today's sprawling campus of modern, state-of-the-art buildings and flowing gardens in Prince George's County, this institution has stood as a welcoming beacon for those seeking new educational opportunities. After President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 and the state of Maryland ratified its constitution abolishing slavery a year later, a group of forward-looking men began to advocate the need to educate the 87,000 newly freed citizens of Maryland. They soon founded the institution that would eventually become Bowie State University. The state did a 1864 emancipation quilt and because Bowie was founded in 1865, we were able to place Bowie State University on that Prince George's Square on the quilt. These 46 men, comprised of Quakers, lawyers, clergymen, and businessmen, established the Baltimore Association for the Moral and Educational Improvement of Colored People. The group's mission was to establish schools for Maryland's black citizens that the state had failed to provide. Perhaps the most important figure in the Baltimore Association was businessman Joseph Cushing. His passionate for education approach veneration, nothing short of veneration. Cushing led the Education Committee of the Maryland Constitutional Convention, but was unable to persuade its members to include provisions for the education of the state's black citizens. He chastised the committee in an address to the convention. The Baltimore Association opened dozens of schools for the newly emancipated slaves around the state. School number one, its first school for the black population in Baltimore, was opened on the corner of Calvert and Saratoga Streets on January 9, 1865. In its first year, it drew some 370 pupils and continued to expand. A normal school to train teachers was added a year later. The school, which became known as the Baltimore Normal School for Colored Teachers, was relocated a short distance to the renovated Friends Meeting House at Cortland and Saratoga Streets. Acquiring sufficient funding was a constant challenge, but in 1871, the Baltimore Normal School received a significant gift from the estate of Nelson Wells, a freed black man who had created an endowment in 1843 to educate free black children. Imagine a man who was a slave, who borrowed money and started a business. The trustees of his will allocated the $3,500 fund to the Baltimore Normal School. The trustees of the Wells will offer the money to an organization which had the same aspirations for educating black people. Finally, in 1908, after repeated petitions, the state of Maryland accepted its responsibility to fund the normal school. The State Board of Education incorporated the school into the state system and renamed it Normal School No. 3. Partly in response to the increases of cruel treatment toward blacks, the NAACP was founded in 1909. Through perseverance, strides were being made toward improving opportunities for blacks. The following year, the state of Maryland purchased the Jericho Farm in Bowie to relocate and expand Normal School No. 3. In September of 1911, the school officially moves and reopens in Bowie under the name of Maryland Normal and Industrial School at Bowie. There were 61 students enrolled. The first school building was erected on the farm and in the beginning only provided campus accommodations for female students. There were three departments, normal, agricultural, and industrial. The school was equivalent to high school and focused on training students as teachers and in the manual arts. Other courses offered included farming, carpentry, and blacksmithing. Although students were not charged tuition, they were required to give one hour of service to school each day. Don Speed Smith Goodlow would serve as the first to head the school in Bowie. Goodlow worked to ensure that the normal school could compete academically with its counterparts and not just teach agriculture. 
He built a brick house for his private residence off Jericho Park Road across the railroad tracks near the school. He lived there with his wife, Fanny, who was the matron of the school and a music teacher. The Goodlow House is still used by Bowie State today and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Following Goodlow, Dr. Leonidas S. James was appointed principal. He increased the enrollment and raised entrance requirements. During his third year, Dr. James initiated the then standard two-year professional normal school program, entitling graduates to receive the highest teaching certificate issued by the State Board of Education. As the academic standards rose, the campus began to expand physically as well. In 1921, Harriet Tubman Hall was built. The women's dormitory housed 48 students. Harriet Tubman Hall continues to be a residence for female students today and is the oldest building on campus. In 1922, the school's first administration building was destroyed by fire. A new frame structure known as the B.K. Bruce Building was built to house a permanent gymnasium, kitchen, and dining room. It would also become the first demonstration school on the campus. It was divided into three classrooms to allow students to practice teaching. Benjamin Banneker Hall opened in November of 1925 to replace the first administration building that was destroyed by fire. It stood next to Tubman Hall and contained a boys dormitory, assembly hall for 300 people, a dining room, two classrooms, two laboratories, and a library room. During this time, the school also had a very gifted and stern faculty. Eva Crocker was really the head of the normal school. She taught us and taught us well. <laughs> well, I remember things, many things that she had taught us that made for a real teacher. Another faculty member was Charlotte B. Robinson, a music teacher for more than 30 years at the school. Around 1929, she composed the song which would become the school alma mater, which continues in use today. We called a CD behind the back. <laughs> Charlotte was a very loving person. She enjoyed working with her students, and if they applied themselves at all, she was happy. The CD was very good. She was strict, and she wanted us to do it just right. The graduates in this time went out to teach in the colored schools in communities throughout the state. I started in Carroll County two years and I retired, resigned, and I was getting ready then to go to Morgan to get my degree. When the supervisor from Baltimore County came up and said, we want you in Baltimore County because you are a Baltimore County girl and you've done exceptionally well here, so we want you in Baltimore County, and they gave me one-room school again, up at Hereford, Hereford, Maryland. They kept me up there for four years, and then they transferred me to Sparks Elementary, and I was there for 25 years. <laughs> My first job was in Calvert County, Maryland. I taught first through seventh grade at a little school in Calvert County, Maryland. And uh, after I taught that school in Calvert County, Maryland, I became 21. So by that time, I was old enough to go into the Women's Army Corps. I taught right here in the county, a little community right up the road from Rockville, Quince Orchard. And I had grades one, two, and three. Went on to Hampton, got my bachelor's degree, and when I went to Boston University, I got another master's degree. And it was all in the field of reading. I became what they call a master teacher. At that time, in the black community, a, the teacher was a special person. I remember my first teaching assignment. It, it was a relatively large town but I'd be walking down the street and the town drunk 
would stand up and tip his hat and say, morning, Professor, as I walked by. I ended up in Talbot County, Maryland. There was an elementary school that had gotten so crowded that they had sent the sixth grade from that elementary school into the county seat, the big school, Robert Moton Elementary School in Easton. So I had the third, fourth, and fifth grade students in that church. I, I, I didn't mind it because in the morning, Monday morning, I'd have to come in, push the church shoes back and pulled the school desk out of the, camp, out of the corner. By 1935, the four-year program for teachers is established. And in 1938, the school's name changed to Maryland Teachers College at Bowie. Dr. William Edward Henry was appointed president in 1941 and served through the Civil Rights Movement up until 1967. Dr. Henry is credited with expanding the teacher education program and transforming the school into a liberal arts college. The Teachers College continued to attract compassionate and supportive faculty. Dr. J. Alexander Wiseman, a Bowie graduate, was an education professor who made a deep impression on many of his students. Dr. Wiseman was very quiet, um, very helpful. And he, if you had a problem or a question, you could always go to him, and he was always, always there to be, to help you. Dr. Wiseman was an interesting guy, very compassionate. You know, he's the kind of person that uh, did not generate a lot of anxiety in you when you were sitting in the class. The thing that really um, was exciting was to see that all the instructors and administrators were here to help you. It was just like coming, leaving a family and coming to a family. In 1963, the Maryland State Legislature authorized the institution to become Bowie State College following the establishment of a liberal arts program. New majors in English, history, and general social science were added, expanding the academic offerings beyond teacher education. But the teachers who had graduated from the institution of the past 30 years were continuing to make a powerful mark on Maryland's public schools. And it was then when integration took place. All of my little folks came up one morning dressed to kill, going down to the white school, <laughs> integration. I was left up on the hill after 25 years with 12 children. And I was there that whole year with 12 children. At the end of that year, they sent me down to Fleming Elementary School. And there's where I started the first special education center. Well, they said I was the only one that met the requirement. I was a reading specialist, the only one in the county. But they treated me very good. I, I never had any trouble uh, being snubbed or called names or no, I was a teacher specialist. Inequality was a nationwide theme during the 60s, and the Teachers College was no exception. In 1968, institutional inequalities prompted a student protest in Annapolis about poor conditions at Bowie, which resulted in 228 student arrests. Their requests to meet with Maryland Governor Spiro Agnew were refused, although he later met with student government leaders after a week of protests on campus. In the late 60s and early 70s, Bowie State's curriculum had begun to develop into a group of robust, respected programs which enabled the institution to offer its first graduate program, the Master of Education. In 1969, Dr. Joseph Alexander Wiseman became the founding director of the graduate division and additional degree programs followed. Bowie State embraced the technological boom in the 80s and shifted its institutional focus toward programs in science, technology, engineering, and math. This helped the college to achieve university status in 1988, becoming what we now know as Bowie State University. 
the university simultaneously joined the newly formed University System of Maryland. I was a student who was uh, into student government and uh, organizations on campus and I wanted to be involved and Bowie State definitely provided that. I came in as a business major and at that time computers were starting to, to uh, take over, let's say, um, expand and to our, uh, our, our communities and to society. And so I decided that I was going to take a computer class. I was in uh, Professor Dove's class and uh, Professor Dove said after the first test, you've done an excellent job and you need to consider changing your major. The university thrived throughout the 90s, becoming a national model institution in STEM in 1995. It partnered with NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center to open the Bowie Satellite Operations and Control Center. At that point, uh, computer science was actually part of the mathematics department at, uh, when I was here. It was a few years after that that the computer science became a separate department, and then we added the computer technology degree, and since that point, it's definitely blossomed into a, a full-fledged uh, competitive um, uh, program that is doing great. Bowie State University ushered in the new millennium under Dr. Calvin W. Lowe, who made several improvements centered substantially around enlarging the budget for physical improvement of the campus, which beautified the aesthetics and the maintenance of the university's scenery. In addition, during his tenure, Lowe initiated construction of the Center for Business and Graduate Studies. In 2006, the university appointed its ninth and current president, Mickey L. Burnham, who continues to focus on enhancing academic programs, assuring fiscal integrity, and modernizing facilities to provide state-of-the-art learning environments. 150 years following the emancipation of slaves and the founding of School No. 1 as one of the first schools for black children in Baltimore, Bowie State University today ranks among the nation's top comprehensive universities. The university continues to inspire young people to take on new challenges and prepare to become the leaders of tomorrow, especially in the STEM fields. Now more than ever, Bowie State University is committed to delivering on the promise of opportunity by preparing students for success in a global society.